today I'm really pleased to introduce Louisa Zayan, who is the founder and COO of uh, Toast Beer. That's right, Louisa, isn't it? Uh, Co-founder and CEO. Co-founder. Okay. Yes. Apologies to your other founder. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure you're very important though in terms of this. Um, And so Louisa, one of the things I like to talk to people about when we talk about their businesses is really um, the thing for me that makes a complete difference between a normal run of the business that makes profit um, to a purpose-led business is really the why. And uh, can you just t- give me a little, give us some insight in terms of why this company um, and why did you set it up? Because it's not easy setting up a company, is it? No, not at all. Um, so my background um, ha- had been very traditional. I had uh, trained as an accountant, had studied law um, and was working in consulting actually at, at the Carbon Trust, um, working on um, uh, uh, carbon footprinting yeah, and, yeah. Um, and, and energy efficiency. Um, and I always felt like um, I needed to be having a more direct impact through my yes, work. I wanted yes, I to be making that. the changes myself rather than advising another big company to, to make yeah. changes. Um, and I met Tristram Stewart, who is a campaigner um, on the food system, looking at the social and environmental impacts of it. He'd met some brewers in Brussels who'd made a beer using surplus bread. And Tristram had previously founded a charity called Feedback. Through their work, they have done a lot of research looking at the food system and what the yeah. problems are within it, with food waste being um, one of the, the key indicators of the fact our food system is really not working. Um, there is, you know, the food production system has a huge impact on the planet. It's responsible yeah. for, you know, most deforestation, fresh water use, pollution, climate change, and yet we waste a third of everything that we produce. Um, and so Tristram saw this opportunity to, uh, to take bread which is wasted at a colossal scale uh, yeah. about 44 percent of all the bread that we produce in the uk is never eaten 44 wow yeah it's a huge amount they obviously don't make toast like i do <laughs> so a lot of it happens in the baking industry yeah uh, so you know bread is baked to forecasts from supermarkets that, that yeah. change and also supermarkets stock those shelves fully um, and demand will never meet uh, that level. Right, okay. Also the sandwich industry, uh, there are, they do not use the heel end of loaves to make sandwiches. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's a genuine byproduct uh, of the industry. So yeah, a huge amount of bread is being wasted and Tristram just saw the opportunity uh, to, to tackle that problem. Tristram is a brilliant inspiring person in terms of like the ideas that he has um and then my role was more about like let's make this happen let's yeah. create this business set it up you know using my uh, professional services um years of training they finally came in useful <laughs> um and yeah and learning a whole lot along the way as well to um, yeah. to get everything set up and who's your chief taster though do you do you get involved in the tasting or who helps you out with the tasting is that you or the family so we have a professional but i think over the past five years we'd like to say we've all become professional beer drinkers <laughs> yes <laughs> and are you ever allowed to drink anything else now or is that is that only for holidays <laughs> <laughs> no I, I have found there are lots of breweries that I s- support as well I think the, the brewing industry as a whole is very supportive of each other uh, there are some Brilliant. fantastic uh, breweries out there many that are also um, working on sustainability so I'm a huge fan of supporting others from the environmental point of view I mean I, I did read something where about where you were talking about the packaging as well the impact of packaging around beer did, did you put a lot of thought into that as well and what you were doing with that yeah so uh, last year for our 2019 um, operations I conducted a carbon footprint of the business yeah. and packaging came out as being one of the most impactful parts of our of our our emissions um we for for a typical beer it would be malt malt is responsible for about a a third of the emissions but obviously because we're replacing some of that malt with bread it is much smaller for us still very significant but much smaller this year has been extra challenging yeah of course obviously with the lockdown there's been a huge increase in the amount of packaged beer with the pubs being shut um 
So I'm working on our carbon footprint at the moment, but I expect actually it will have increased. Um, I mean, and so much so that there is an aluminium shortage. Equally, even with cardboard boxes, if you think about the number of people that are having deliveries to their home in you know, single package cases instead of, uh, of buying maybe groceries from one single shop, those, there has been a shortage of cardboard as well. So packaging continues wow. to be a problem and has been exasperated by the lockdown. Wow, that really, I hadn't thought about that. I hadn't thought that we could possibly have a shortage of cardboard. That's extraordinary. And it's, I mean, I guess the industry, are you, do you think the industry is coming together to try and help solve some of these issues? On our cans, we currently have PP uh, plastic labels around the mm -hmm. can. We do want to move to printed cans, but we're not um, packing at a level that meets a minimum order quantity for printed right. cans. So okay. we're constrained a little bit on that. Um, but the PP labels, we've discovered a material that is wood based. Um, wow, great. And so we, uh, again, we weren't meeting the minimum order quantity, but with the printer, we found another brewery that wanted to do it as well. And we've combined orders. So this is really exciting for us. I think we're one of the yeah. uh, companies that will be using this wood based alternative to PP. Um, and it wouldn't have been possible uh, without working with another business. Yeah, I mean, that's a fantastic example of collaboration. And I mean, it is really interesting when you're part of a purpose led business that you, I think you do do business differently. Um, one, of, one of the big challenges, I think, for any purpose led business is when it clashes with something else in the business, normally commercial and finance. Have, have you had a situation like that where you've had to really sit and think hard and long about the purpose and, and the financial reality of the situation you're in? Um, I think for us, we because we set up with sustainability as part of our DNA and part yeah. of our brand story as well, um, we've had customers that have supported us because we're sustainable. And so by being a sustainable business, we have been able to sell our product. And so it's, it's kind of been very interrelated in that sense. Um, I've actually found it's been a little bit easier this year because previously, uh, as we were working with our main customers being the supermarkets, um, we have had a pressure to reduce our costs, yeah. not just stop them going up by being more sustainable, but actually, you know, cut them so that the supermarkets, if they become part of a price war with their competitors, are able to reduce the price. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, when you see that, it's usually the supplier that is, is taking the hit. Yeah. Um, or to even to improve the supermarket's margin. So we've been a little bit at the mercy um, of a fixed, you know, selling price to supermarkets. Um, with selling direct to customers now and customers that care about our mission and want us to do more than we've done in the past yeah uh, you know and for us to have more time and space to tell the story to explain to people why we're doing something and what impact it will have um I, like we haven't increased our prices but you know we, we're not having the same pressure um to um to reduce those and we're not pushed so much on um, on the price of the beer yeah, I mean, that's fascinating. That kind of that idea of taking the story directly to consumers is so powerful, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, yeah. And uh, obviously, COVID has affected all of us. I mean, I think particularly the workplace. I'm, I'm kind of assuming that traditionally you would all get together with your work colleagues and be in a similar space. What, what have the challenges been for you kind of personally and and related to the team and, and how have you overcome them? The immediate impact on the business was losing 65% of our revenue overnight yeah, of course. as the on trade was shut yeah. down. Um, so it's not just pubs, we've supplied restaurants, theatre groups, um, you know, events as well. Um, but a lot of the team also were very much part of the delivery of that service. We had yeah. you know, sales teams um, that not not just going out and selling but maintaining those relationships that we had with our customers our business customers so pretty much overnight their jobs were not needed um, yeah. so we've had a most of the team were put onto furlough um, back in march last year which was very difficult 
for them yeah um you know lots of them young people who you know were no longer able to go out and you know have their own the amazing social lives in london but also they didn't have the interaction of being with each other um in the workplace also hard on the remaining team the kind of the feel of working changed overnight so i think one of the things we have learned is that skill at adapting quickly yes um yes. and the kind of been quite fun to do so as well you know there's you need a lot of creative thinking and yeah. you need to take a few more risks balanced risks um but you know find a way to try out new ideas quickly you know learn from them as fast as possible um adapt to change if they don't work or, or roll them out if they do and that is you know it's quite a fun way of working thinking of positive this come, things that come out obviously going direct to consumers is do you see that as a positive twist on this that that actually that opportunity is is really and you might build on that going forwards for the business yeah absolutely that it's been so wonderful to have that direct link with our customers i think we're quite lucky as well we have very supportive customers mm -hmm. and so we, we get a lot of positive feedback directly and constructive feedback. You know, if, if our, something happens with the website, the website breaks, we will probably receive an email from somebody letting us know before we notice ourselves. Yeah, at the moment. yeah really um, powerful. Yeah, people have been so helpful. Or, you know, it's, it's like with the website, it's so difficult to test the full customer journey through all different um, interfaces and technologies. So having people that are kind of, you know, they want our business to succeed yes so they're, they're doing their bit as well to help us has been just incredible and makes it so much more rewarding for us to be developing beers and content and service that is valuable to people as well I mean I think that's a really nice point to make actually it's made me think of something that actually one of the things that actually really differentiate for purpose-led businesses is their customers because their customers also believe in the purpose that the business is trying to establish so yeah so powerful and and, and I think good we at Good Energy have exactly the same in in that that feeling that customers are so important in terms of testing and understanding and helping us be better at what we do anyway it's been so nice talking to you and my first thing i'm going to do is go onto your website and order some beer because that <laughs> is one of the things i i seem to have lots of other forms of uh, alcohol in this house but not beer at the moment so that is one thing i'm going to change after this oh, interview fantastic. So, thank you thank you so much for talking to us and it's been an absolute pleasure and a joy thank you so much